Hello guys, let's learn some Unity programming. Today we will learn about functions, variables and script structure in Unity. And you will create your first game with just this knowledge. So let's create our first script and call it Cookie Clicker. Let's open it in Visual Studio and look at its structure. At the very top we see a bunch of things which say using. Those are needed if we want to reference some existing code for some functions from Unity engine itself. Next goes the definition of a class. We can see that we have a public class called cookie clicker. We also have function start, which is called right before the first frame, and update, which is called every frame. By called, we mean executed. Our cookie clicker class inherits from monobehavior. Monobehavior is also a class, which basically means that it is a Unity component, and you can drag the script onto objects in Unity itself. So let's talk about value types. You can see void in front of our two functions. That is a return type of a function. Void means we return nothing, but there are actual types that hold some values. Let's look only at the ones that are most commonly used for now. Type int integer holds a numeric value, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, minus 1, etc. By the way, after two slashes, we have a comment. Comments are here only for a programmer and they will not be executed by the script. They're very helpful for remembering or explaining stuff. Type float, which holds a floating point number or number with decimals. For example, 1.2f, any number point any number f, 0f or 12f or anything f. Keep in mind that these numbers are losing precision on their decimal parts when you manipulate them. So use only when you need them. Next type is string. It's text. For example, mamma mia, it's a Maria. Basically any text. You have to put raw text that you want to assign inside quotation marks. Type bool, boolean, can be true or false. This is basically yes or no. These are the basic types that you will use in Unity all the time. There are more but we will talk about them in the next lesson. Another type of variables that you can create is class variables. For example, in Unity we have transforms, which are classes, like ours, just storing different data and executing different functions. We can store one specific transform in a variable, so we can always exit it. So let's create a variable transform on the class transform. This is a variable which you can use as a reference to some transforms in scene. Transform hold information about object position and state in the world, such as having a parent, rotation and scale. Let's make it public. Making something public allows you to see it in the editor on the script. It also provides access to other scripts if they want to access this variable. There is also an option to make something private. The general rule is that if it is not intended for the use outside of this class, it should be private. Though many programmers means many coding styles and many opinions, so do whatever you want, especially when you learn. The private variables are not shown in the editor by default. If you want to show them, you have to add an attribute serialize field, a buff variable declaration. And you can see that transform is highlighted green. That is because the transform name is already reserved in every class that you create. It will be default reference to the transform of the object to which this script is attached to. So let's change it to my transform. Another type which is commonly used is vector3 type. For example, it is used to store position coordinates or movement vectors. Let's initialize our variable with some value. To do that, we can assign it a new vector3 with values 1, 2 and 3 for x, y and z. Or we can just assign it one of the predefined vector trees, top, down, forward or left, or any other. We can also create a class variable of a class itself. So let's create the variable of type cookie clicker and call it this instance. And let's initialize it in the start function with this. This is a reserved keyword for this exact instance of a class. So if we would have 10 cookie clickers components, 
attached to different cookies in the scene, each component will store a reference to itself in this instance variable. So let's sum it up. We have integers, floats, strings, bools, class variables, which are referencing components or other classes. We also have functions start and update. Let's create our own function and call it make a cookie. We can call our function from another function, for example, from update. Let's remove everything we do not need. So we want to count cookies. To do that, we need to create a variable where we would store the current value of a cookie count. And let's make our function do something. For example, increase cookies by one. What we actually do here, we assign a new value to our variable, which will be equal to the current value of this variable plus one. So update is called every frame and 60 FPS means 60 frames per second. So we'll get 60 cookies per second. Let's see what else functions can do. We can pass a parameter to a function and then use it inside, for example, to figure out how many cookies we should add per function execution. Let's say we add five cookies. We pass it as a parameter and then we add this parameter to cookie count. We can also set a default value, for example, to one. And when we call the function without a parameter, the function will use the default value. So for now we have six cookies every frame because the make a cookie function is called in update, which is called every frame. Let's look into the void. Void is a return type. It means that it returns nothing. What if we want to return how many cookies we have after the operation? Let's change void to int. Now since return type is not void, we have to return some value. We do that by adding return command and following it by some value of a return type. In our case, int. Let's move our equation to the top and return just the result. We should create a variable of type text. Text is a UI component which can display text on canvases. We can see that our script cannot recognize text as a class. That is because we need to specify that we are using Unity Engine UI. And let's set a text to the amount of cookies that we have. As you can see, it is not that easy. That happens because make a cookie returns us in type but the text is a string. Types have to match in a lot of cases. But it is easy to fix. If you have some kind of digital value or a number, you can convert it to text using to string call. To string is a function that takes a value you apply it to transforms it into a string and returns that string. It would look something like that. Function to string with return type string and parameter int value. We create a local variable of a type string and assign it a string which we get after some magical conversion. And then we return the string. Pretty simple. The thing that you just saw was pseudocoding, which is a common practice in programming where you just block out your program without having real code in. You might have noticed that we have text defined here and on the top. Here text is defined in local scope. It does not exist outside of this function. The text references the text we defined on top because the text from string function does not exist here. This that text references the text we defined on top, 
because the text from string function doesn't exist here. And here it references the local text variable because it has a priority. The more local the scope is, the more priority it has. But let's make a game now. For a cookie clicker, we need a possibility to click on a cookie, which we will do in Unity by creating a button. And we need a function in script, which will be called by that button. That function should print out into the text on the canvas the new count of cookies. It should be public, so we can attach it from Unity. Let's make a function. Public function called make a cookie, which returns nothing, so of type void. Then we write an equation for our cookie incrementation. We can write it in a more beautiful way. It is the same thing as the thing on top. This way is preferred over the one on top. This way is even better. Same as on top, the works only with value one, which is pretty common. And let's set our text, which has a variable text inside it. We set this variable to the cookie count that we have after we convert it to a string. And since our variables are private, let's add an attribute to show them in editor. Okay. Now we can make our game in the editor. Let's create a canvas, call it cookie canvas. We need a text to display cookie counter and we need a cookie button. Let's move our game window, change our canvas render mode to camera and drag main camera into render camera field. Change plane distance to one because we don't want a huge canvas. Set resolution on our game window to full HD. And let's position the cookie button in the center and make it big. Delete the text on the button because we won't need it. Switch to the cookie count text and try to position it above the button. Increase the font size and the size of the text field so it will fit the number. Make it bold to be more visible. All we need to do now is assign our script to some object. Let's assign it to our canvas. It has a text field that is right now empty. Let's drag cookie count into it and select cookie button. Button component has on click section, where you can add functions which will be called when we the player presses the button. Click plus, drag the object with the script that holds the functions that we want to use into the empty field that appeared. In our case, it is cookie canvas, where we have cookie clicker script attached. And select the functions that you want to call. The game is ready. Run it. Now when you click the button, the number of cookies increase. You are our Unity Pro now. So I found a cookie on the internet to make our game pretty. Let's change it to sprite from texture, so we can e easily manipulate it in scene. Select cookie button and drag our cookie into source image field of image component. Unfortunately, this picture doesn't have transparent background. So run the game, and now when you click a cookie, the number increases.
we can make the game screen bigger and click, 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 click. Now I have a homework for you. Make a second cookie with its own counter. So we'll have two cookies in scene, each with its own counter. I hope you liked this introduction lesson. If you want to see more of it, please like the video. Feel free to ask about specific tutorials in comments and enjoy your game and see you in the next video. Bye!